First, giving honor to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hey guys, this is Sweet Holy Justice, and today I'm going to talk to you about unnecessary storms. My scriptural references come from 1 Chronicles chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, and 13 Amplified Version. Verses 1 through 6. Now it came about after this that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, died, and his son became king in his place. David said, I will be kind to Hanan, son of Nahash, because his father was kind to me. So David sent messengers to comfort him concerning the death of his father. And the servants of David came to the land of the Ammonites to comfort Hanan. But the leaders of the Ammonites said to Hanan, Do you think that David has sent people to console and comfort you because he honors your father? Have his servants not come to you to search and to overthrow and overthrow and to spy out the land? Therefore Hanan took David's servants, shaved them, cutting off half their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle as far as their buttocks and sent them away in humiliation. When David was told how the men were treated, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were very humiliated and ashamed to return. So the king said, Stay in Jericho until your beards grow back, and then return. When the Ammonites saw that they had made themselves hateful to David, Hanan and his people sent 1,000 talents of silver to hire for themselves chariots and horsemen from Mesopotamia, Aram, Rakah, and Zobah. Now, my next scripture is 1 Chronicles 19.13. Be strong and let us show ourselves courageous for the sake of our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. Now, finishing up the story, the Ammonites prepared for battle because they knew war was coming after what they did. And they formed alliances and, you know, got chariots and horsemen. But the alliances fell when they saw that they were losing and they started to cooperate with David because Israel was winning. And next, David and the Israelites gave their situation to God, and God gave them the victory over the Ammonites, and they were able to take the land and um, take control. Now, we can apply this scripture to our lives in, well, I say five points. The first one is know how to handle being hurt for doing the right thing. Second is not to use foolishness to avoid a problem. Third not don't let secondhand information be your only evidence my fourth reason is foolishness brings chaos and destruction and five put your battles in god's hands and trust him completely my first point know how to know how to handle being hurt for doing the right thing and this happens from time to time in our lives when we do the right thing and get hurt for the thing that we did and it was the right thing to do you know, um, this was the case with David. He was only trying to console Hanan because he was friends with his father. And, you know, who would not have sympathy for someone grieving the loss of their loved one? David extended a, 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 an olive branch to Hanan and he returned it with humiliation. And my encouragement here is to not you know don't stop doing the right thing instead give that to God and let him handle those ungrateful people my second point is don't use foolishness to avoid a problem now I don't know where Hanan got the whole idea of cutting off their garments shaving off half their beards and um, you know humiliating the servants but he supposedly was trying to avoid Israel spying on the land and overthrowing him which initially wasn't a problem there was no dignity in the way Hanan conducted himself and he could have easily told the servants that they were they weren't welcome and that they need to go back to Israel and my advice here is not to lose your cool there is a dignified way to act just as there is an undignified way to avoid 
acting. When something comes up, don't do things that you'll regret in the spur of the moment. Always act in an appropriate manner and keep a cool head. My third point is not to let secondhand information be your only information. The only reason things happened the way they did was because Hanan was listening to someone else. Hanan, Hanan, he knew David. In fact, David was a friend of his father's, and yet he let someone tell him that David's intentions were bad. Hanan had no real evidence that David was trying to hurt him, and he should have even realized, you know, I think David really is trying to console me and, you know, offer his condolences for my father's passing. And my advice in this is some people are instigators and only want to see a fight. Don't get mad at someone because of something someone else said that that person's intentions are for you. Let it come from the person themselves. Don't follow things unless you have clear evidence and know that it is true. Secondhand information can be false. So go and talk to the person themselves or try to get an understanding and evidence of the situation. My fourth point is foolishness brings chaos and destruction. Israel would have remained at peace with the Ammonites if Hanan had not acted foolishly and humiliated David's servants. The Ammonites ended up in war and thousands of lives were even lost because they rejected an olive branch and shot it with shame and humiliation for no good reason. Not only that, David ended up overthrowing the Ammonites and taking over Hanan's kingdom anyway. So, you know, that wasn't his original plan, but the chips just fell where they landed. That's just how things ended. And my advice is don't lose what's already yours because of foolishness. If you act out, things, you know, can get worse and possibly destroy friendship, opportunities, and dreams. If someone angers you, if they really did do something that was deserving of your anger, don't act crazy and get fired or go to jail or whatever it is. There is a way to, you know, work around it, fix the problem, and first you should give it to God. The Bible also says don't let anger cause you to sin. And my last point is to put your battles in God's hands and trust in Him completely. As you saw in verse 13, you know, it tells you to be strong and show yourselves courageous. And, you know, it also said, may God do whatever is good in his sight. I'm just paraphrasing here. In other words, let God do what he sees is the right thing to do. The Israelites were prepared for battle and they weren't afraid. They had to be brave. They had to be courageous. And not only did God give them the victory, but he even blessed them with the land. David was even able to take the crown off the king's head, and it was a cooler crown, so David got that one. And um, he also dedicated all the stuff he got to God. And my advice here is when battles come our way, we have to put it in God's hands. And that means, just it doesn't just mean to let God fight our battles, but it also means to trust him in whatever he sees is fit. We are not all knowing. We're not. We're not omnipotent. We're not omniscient. Uh, omniscient. We don't have all power. God does, and you know we have to realize our knowledge is limited, and we've only been on Earth a certain amount of years, where as God has been here forever. So we have to trust that God knows what He's doing. And when people come come at us and attack us, especially when we're doing the right thing, we must have faith in God and trust that He will deliver us. Especially if we didn't do anything wrong, we were simply following God's word and being a good Christian and follower of Christ. God's going to work it out. He's not going to hurt you. He's not going to let you fall. It's going to be all right. I hope this video was a blessing to you. I love you and I'm always praying for you. I also invite you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And um, give this video a like. Thank you and God bless.